Air Services considers runway safety to be a serious threat to aviation safety. We work with industry to manage runway safety risks across our towered locations. Class D controlled aerodromes are complex, busy and involve diverse aviation activities. The airport design and procedures allow for many aircraft movements, but errors can easily result in runway safety occurrences. At these aerodromes, our air traffic controllers experience high task demands, reducing their ability to detect pilot errors before they result in a safety occurrence, such as a runway incursion. This video will assist you to understand how you can contribute to improving runway safety outcomes. Your flight preparation is critical. Ensure you allocate adequate time to fully understand taxiway and runway layouts applicable to your flight. Review the aerodrome chart, familiarising yourself with current local procedures and restrictions such as those published in the En Route Supplement Australia and Notices to Airmen. Keep the chart available as you taxi. Aerodrome markings, information signs and lights are installed to assist you to follow correct taxi routes. Ensure you are familiar with these and their meaning. If in doubt, refer to the Aeronautical Information Publication for further information. All runways and helipads are active during published air traffic control hours and require a clearance to enter, cross, backtrack or taxi on. When navigating around an aerodrome, pay attention to complex intersections that may result in confusion on the direction to take. Effective pilot controller communications are critical to runway safety. The potential for communication errors is decreased by using published standard phraseology that helps avoid misunderstanding the intent of transmissions. Before requesting taxi clearance, listen to the current automatic terminal information service and determine the runway in use. This will assist you anticipate what taxi instructions you may be issued. Obtain your airways clearance before your taxi clearance. This will reduce the amount of information you need to retain and read back. Good radio techniques also assist minimise errors. Be prepared. Know what you are going to say before transmitting. Avoid over-transmitting other pilots or air traffic control and always check and cross-check you are transmitting on the correct frequency. If you are not familiar with the aerodrome, request detailed taxi instructions from air traffic control. They are there to assist you. Write down your taxi instructions as this can help you to remember the clearance you are issued and in providing the required clearance readback. Read back required elements of the clearance as published in the Aeronautical Information Publication and always seek clarification from air traffic control if in doubt. When you commence taxiing, pay careful attention and follow all markings and signs and continue to monitor the air traffic control frequency. Follow your cleared taxi route, referencing the aerodrome chart and signs that identify the taxiway you are on. These are a yellow marking on a black background. You may also see direction signs, which identify the designations of taxiways leading to an intersection, as well as an arrow indicating the approximate course to turn to align the aircraft on the taxiway. These have black markings on a yellow background. As you approach the holding point, you'll see a marking pattern consisting of two or more yellow lines, some of which are solid and some of which are dashed. These are the runway holding position markings. Holding points will not be aligned with the sealed surface of the runway. They will be set back to be in line with the gable markers. When issued a clearance to taxi to a holding point, or when instructed to hold short of the runway, always stop before the first solid line of the runway holding point marking. You must obtain and read back a clearance to enter, cross, line up or take off from the designated runway before crossing from the solid side to the dashed side of a runway holding point at any aerodrome when a control tower is operating. Some aerodromes use separate frequencies for different runways. Ensure you are on the appropriate frequency for the runway you intend to use. You may be issued an instruction to line up and wait when a takeoff clearance cannot immediately be issued. Do not commence your takeoff roll until a specific takeoff clearance has been issued and you have read it back. Before entering the runway, it's a good idea to scan the full length of the runway and scan for aircraft on final approach or landing roll. Unless authorised by air traffic control, do not backtrack or hold on the runway in use. After landing, vacate the runway as soon as it is safe to do so. At locations that operate parallel runways, beware you may need to hold short of the adjacent runway. 
Ensure you clear the runway and runway strip completely. You are permitted to cross from the dashed side to the solid side of a runway holding point after vacating the runway. Stop only if you are facing the solid yellow line of the next holding point. Always remember to ask air traffic control if you are unsure of the instructions provided. And collectively, we can all work together to maintain safety on the aerodrome.